lots of people have been talking about imposter syndrome over the last few years. Yeah. And when I talk about imposter syndrome, I'm talking about that feeling of being a bit of a fraud, being somewhere and I don't really deserve to be here. I'm not clever enough. I'm not experienced enough. I'm not old enough or I'm too old. And lots of the people we work with assume that that never happens to you. You're super confident, right on top of your game. And I'm not sure that's right, is it? No, it's not right. It's not right. It's that, it's that nagging inner voice. It's that deep-seated insecurity that we all have, we all should have, which constantly is making us question whether we deserve to be here. I've got it a little bit right now, if I'm honest. And, uh, and it's a necessary thing, I think. It is, it, it, let's, let's, let's separate this from the performance anxiety of, let's say, going up in front of a big crowd or talking to a big group of boys. There is a natural anxiety in like, oh my God, oh my God, uh, of like fight or flight. But this is the deeper seated, the hindbrain speaking to you saying, you're not worthy of this. You're not up to this. There are many people in this room who are way better at this than you are. Step away. This is not your gig. Yeah. So interestingly, I had no idea about this 15 years ago. And it was a group of cardiothoracic surgeons who brought it to my attention when one of them went, oh, I'm frightened people are going to realise I'm not that clever. And then the other 11 people in that group went, oh my God, me too. So then I started to look into it a little more. In those days, it was called Achilles syndrome. It's now called imposter syndrome, but actually there's a feeling that that should change and should be called imposter phenomenon or even imposter experience. Right. <laughs> and that actually, as you said, it's not just one of those things and something that uh, high achievers will get sometimes. It looks as though it's crucial to people who are going to be really successful because that's what keeps them grounded. That's what keeps their motivation going. It's sort of motivational fuel, if you like. Absolutely. And it's the thing that it's the thing that drives you to be the best that you can possibly be. If you're worried, terrified that you're, you're going up in front of a, a, a crowd or you're doing something that is at the edge of your comfort, then the best way to prepare to, to make yourself be the best you can be is to prepare heavily for it. And let's say, let's take an extreme example. Like you're a medical student and you wrote a paper with your boss and it did really well and it got published in a great journal and you're you're now you're now presenting that to the American Academy of the Orthopedic Surgeons. Like the like a thousand people are gonna watch this presentation. You would have this in spades. And and you'll be terrified. But you've been invited, you did the work, you've earned this, this is your gig. And you know, everyone, and all you have to do in, in terms of honouring that contract is to turn up and be fully as prepared as you can possibly be. And then you are truly worthy of your station. I, I wonder though, Pete, whether being a medical student in that, in that kind of situation might be easier than being somebody who is an established name, reputation in a particular field, and, and living up to that can be really scary. It really can. It, it, it can be. It's, it's, it's difficult for, for juniors who don't feel worthy. It can be difficult for young consultants who, who don't feel they're ever being taken seriously by the older guard. But what they don't realise is the older guard are racked with this, this same insecurity, but in a different way. They look downwards and see these whippersnappers coming up uh, with new ideas and crazy thoughts uh, that, that make them feel old fashioned and out of touch. Yeah everybody's got it to some degree, uh, but just in a slightly different flavour. Yes, yeah, so, so I'm at the older end and, and, and coming towards retirement and looking back and seeing amazing people doing amazing things and thinking, gosh, at what point do I go over the hill where I don't really have any value and I'm just sort of hanging around smelling of wee? Your, your... <laughs> there is a time where... You are the imposter. You can become an imposter. So I, I don't think imposter, uh, the role of the imposter is a real thing. And it usually arises when people start speaking or behaving or operating outside of their expertise. 
when you are when you're trying to give a talk about something you don't do very much when you're doing an operation you hardly ever do and now you're doing it and it's quite a tricky one that again you are playing you are in danger of becoming that imposter so imposters true imposters don't feel the same way they don't have insight so they don't feel like I'm in the wrong place I'm not clever enough I don't know enough so that might be reassuring to those who might be listening to this uh, there, there's also some interesting comments around um, imposter phenomenon and it's it's often in the past been linked to particularly women but as we know it isn't just women but it may be that if we look at the work that's been done cross-culturally if we look at men men are often assumed to be capable whereas women have to prove it and that has come up time and again across all kinds of different cultures so it's again no wonder that imposter uh, phenomenon tends to be associated with women, but it is definitely not limited to women. Absolutely not. And I would sell it as a good thing, not a bad thing. It is the thing that makes you be the best you can possibly be, but you have to make it such that it's not crippling to you and, 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 and holds you back. So it's motivational fuel. Exactly. So to protect oneself against the negative bits of the imposter experience, accepting that it can provide motivational fuel, the really important thing is to recognise it as you are feeling it or as colleagues are feeling it, recognise it for what it is, label it for what it is, harness that energy to strive for uh, improved performance if you like and keep talking about it. Absolutely. And your best defence against feeling inadequate in a certain situation is preparation. If it's, a, if it's a lecture to 100 people, prepare it well. If it's presenting your paper, know it inside out. If it's doing an operation that's a little bit scary, it is look it up beforehand and be absolutely clear on what you're doing and look through those x-rays again and again and again and have a clear pre-operative plan. Preparation is your greatest defence against imposter syndrome. Thank <laughs> you.